Welcome to the China Briefing. The content of the briefing includes Protesters in Tokyo target China on founding anniversary. Maldives Muazu marches to victory on anti-India drumbeat. How China's new voluntary carbon credit market can be a game-changer. Jamie Watt, to save our most precious relationship, Canada must start pulling its weight. Asian Games official hit by stray throwing hammer. Protesters in Tokyo target China on founding anniversary. Japan Times. Minority communities and Japanese supporters in Tokyo held a protest on the 74th anniversary of the founding of the People's Republic of China. They demanded an end to alleged human rights abuses, including repression, genocide, and expansionist policies. The groups represented Tibet, Uyghurs, Inner Mongolia, Hong Kong, and Taiwan. The protesters condemned China for these actions, which have caused regional tensions. One Hong Kong student expressed fear due to reports of overseas Chinese police stations in Japan but stated his responsibility to continue fighting. Maldives Muazu marches to victory on anti-India drumbeat. Nikkei Asia. Mohamed Muazu, the opposition candidate, won the Maldives presidential election with 54% of the vote. Muazu's victory is seen as a win for Beijing and a loss for New Delhi. However, South Asian diplomats expect Muazu to adopt a balanced diplomatic tone rather than a strident one. During the election campaign, Muazu criticized incumbent President Ibrahim Mohamed Soli for failing to deliver on his clean government promises and for undermining the country's sovereignty with his pro-India stance. The India-China contest for influence in the Maldives has raised the diplomatic importance of the country. In 2018, India began providing millions of dollars of development assistance to the Maldives to counter China's influence during the presidency of Abdullah Yameen. During the election campaign, seven candidates ran against Soli with anti-India messages, questioning New Delhi's security presence in the Maldives. Meanwhile, Soli and Lt. Gen. Abdullah Shamal denied that they had allowed India too much influence in the country. How China's new voluntary carbon credit market can be a game-changer. South China Morning Post. China's voluntary carbon market has the potential to become the world's most influential carbon offset standard, supported by the National Emissions Trading Scheme, ETS. The market could offset up to 5% of emissions that exceed ETS targets, meeting an annual carbon offset demand of 200 million tons. However, the quality of voluntary credits is under scrutiny and the market will need to meet international standards to become globally influential. Asian countries are seeking opportunities in the carbon market and new trading platforms have emerged in Hong Kong, Singapore, Thailand and Malaysia. Jamie Watt to save our most precious relationship, Canada must start pulling its weight. The Toronto Star Canada is facing increasing threats and challenges from major global powers such as Russia, China, and India. In addition, the potential re-election of Donald Trump in 2024 poses a significant threat to Canada, as he has shown hostility towards the country and has imposed tariffs in the past. Canada's dependence on the US is growing but its friends are no longer welcoming. To improve its position, Canada must diversify its trade relationships and focus on security, including adequately funding its military. Canada should also leverage its energy resources to build a North American security and energy sufficiency partnership with the US. Asian Games official hit by stray throwing hammer. Deutsche Welle. During the men's hammer throw final at the 19th Asian Games in Hangzhou, China, a Kuwaiti athlete aborted his throw, resulting in the hammer hitting an athletic official and breaking his leg. The official, Wang Qinhua, was sitting several meters outside the throwing circle when the hammer flew into the protective netting and then struck his leg. The athlete rushed to his aid and medical staff soon arrived to take Wang away on a stretcher. He is set to undergo surgery for his fracture but is currently stable. The incident has prompted calls for better protective measures for athletic officials. S. Korea beat China for badminton gold, but hosts gain shooting world record. Reuters. South Korea defeated China in the women's team badminton final at the Asian Games in Hangzhou to take gold. South Korea won all three matches in the tie, 
with An Seyang defeating Chen Yufei in the first match. Meanwhile, China set a new world record in the women's team trap shooting event, winning gold with a score of 357 points. India's Aditya Shok, who had a seven-shot lead going into the final day, lost her chance for gold in the golf event, allowing Apichai Yubal of Thailand to claim an unlikely victory. VPN growth highlights global crackdown on internet freedom. Nikkei Asia The use of virtual private networks, VPNs, is growing worldwide as people become more aware of the risks to their data security. VPNs help users avoid network blackouts and censorship, which is especially important in authoritarian countries where governments restrict access to the internet. The global market for VPNs is estimated to have reached $44.6 billion in 2022, up 80% from 2019, and is expected to reach $75.5 billion by 2027. VPNs encrypt data and hide users' IP addresses, making it difficult for third parties to intercept communication. The increasing demand for VPNs is driven by concerns over internet freedom and privacy. At Canada's largest Atlantic puffing colony, chicks are dying of starvation. CBC The Atlantic puffin population on Newfoundland's Avalon Peninsula has been hit hard this year by problems in the ocean ecology, including warming ocean temperatures and a struggling food web. Volunteers from the puffin patrol have noticed a significant decrease in the number of puffin chicks, or pufflings, being stranded on the shore this summer. Wildlife biologist Sabina Wilhelm and her colleagues have discovered that many puffin chicks have perished due to starvation. The adult puffins feed on capelin, a forage fish, and bring it back to the nest for their chicks. However, when food is scarce, the adults feed themselves, leaving the chicks to starve. Additionally, the warmer ocean temperatures are causing the capelin to move deeper into the water column, making it inaccessible to puffins. The Atlantic puffin population is robust overall, but the starvation of so many chicks this year is a concern. This situation is a warning sign that the ocean is under stress from climate change, according to tour boat operator Joe O'Brien. Dear viewers, it's your favorite resident observer from the six dimensions, Dr. Six, here to bring you the latest news from around the world. Let's dive right into it. First up, we have protesters in Tokyo targeting China on the founding anniversary. Minority communities and Japanese supporters gathered to demand an end to alleged human rights abuses. The tension between China and its neighboring regions is palpable, and these protests are a reflection of the growing concerns. It seems like China's actions are not going unnoticed. Next, we have the Maldives presidential election, where Mohamed Muazu emerged victorious. His win is seen as a victory for Beijing and a loss for New Delhi. However, diplomats predict that Muazu will take a balanced approach in his diplomacy. The India-China contest for influence in the Maldives is raising the country's diplomatic importance. It's a delicate dance between two major powers, and only time will tell how it unfolds. Moving on, let's talk about China's new voluntary carbon credit market. This market has the potential to become the most influential carbon offset standard in the world. However, it needs to meet international standards and ensure the quality of voluntary credits. Asian countries are also jumping on the carbon market bandwagon, with new trading platforms emerging. It's an exciting step towards a greener future. Now, let's shift our attention to Canada. Our friendly neighbor up north is facing increasing threats and challenges from major global powers. With the potential re-election of Donald Trump, Canada needs to start pulling its weight and diversify its trade relationships. Building a North American security and energy sufficiency partnership with the US could be a game-changer for Canada's position on the world stage. In lighter news, we have an unfortunate incident at the Asian Games in Hangzhou. An athletic official was hit by a stray throwing hammer during the men's hammer throw final. Calls for better protective measures for officials have been made. Safety first, folks. On a more positive note, South Korea defeated China in the women's team badminton final, taking home the gold. China, however, set a new world record in the women's team trap shooting event. 
sportsmanship and achievements are on display at the Asian Games. Now, let's talk about internet freedom. The use of virtual private networks, VPNs, is on the rise as people become more aware of data security risks. VPNs help users bypass censorship and avoid network blackouts, especially in authoritarian countries. The demand for VPNs is driven by concerns over internet freedom and privacy. It's a sign that people value their online security and are taking steps to protect themselves. Lastly, we have a concerning situation with the Atlantic puffin population in Newfoundland's Avalon Peninsula. Due to problems in the ocean ecology, including warming ocean temperatures and a struggling food web, many puffin chicks have perished due to starvation. This serves as a warning sign that our oceans are under stress from climate change. It's a reminder that we need to take care of our planet and its precious ecosystems. And that's a wrap, folks. I hope you've enjoyed this roundup of news from around the world. Now it's your turn to join the conversation. What are your thoughts on these stories? Let's hear what you have to say. Until next time, keep exploring the six dimensions. Dr. Six. Thank you for tuning in. The content above showcases the latest briefing reports and analytical synopses, thoughtfully curated by the 6DO team. These insights stem from a wide array of reputable media outlets, think tanks, government sources, and specialized experts worldwide. We encourage you to explore these sources for a comprehensive perspective. Keep in mind that while the content may not always align with the official standpoint of 6DO brief, it's not meant to be taken as absolute directives for decision-making. Comprising seasoned media professionals, learned scholars, and accomplished scientists, the 6DO team embodies a trailblazing, fully independent media entity. To customize 6DO Brief to meet your professional needs, you have the option to subscribe to a diverse array of briefings on our website, 6dobrief.com. Regardless of your location, you can conveniently receive 6DO brief via email.